everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is Jim Scork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. And awesome reviewer Silver Quill. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. Not many people know this, but I myself am a pop culture joke. <laughs> You can see that there is a hypocrite right behind that massive mountain that says Silver's Ego right there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mountain, <laughs> sir, you underestimate me. It is a planetoid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It has its own gravitational pull. Be careful or you'll get sucked right into it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, how have you guys been? Uh, could be better, but I'm good. I'm good. Ow. I'm doing well. That's I don't awesome. Think, I don't think I can sound as painful as Norman there. <laughs> oh, that's that's fine. But yeah, I hope you guys are ready because we're going to be reviewing another comic of the Friends Forever series. This is uh, issue number four, uh, uh, starring Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor, uh, written by Rob Anderson. <clears throat> Sorry for that. I'm dealing with a bit of a cold. Uh, written by the, Rob Anderson, with art by Amy Meberson, and colors by Heather Breckel. Now, wow, this 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 pair. We, now, I think this comic kind of addresses one of the things that people were complaining the most when the season two finale rolled in. The whole wait, wait, wait hang on a minute. Twilight Sparkle has a brother. What? Where, where did this came from? <laughs> the Hasbro toy design market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he just uh, has for waved its magic wand and bam, shining armor. And uh, he has to come with a waifu, so we're gonna give him a princess cadence. That's that's good. Okay, L- roll with it. Next season. Uh, but yeah, in this comic, uh, we have Twilight and Shining uh, being brother and sister and all that. And wow, this is uh, kind of interesting. It's Basically, Twilight Sparkle goes to meet with uh, Shining at the Crystal Empire, but as usual, Shining is way too busy and uh, way too model with all this paperwork. And basically, that is the plot, because there is something going on over there, and we, if we're going to discuss it, we're going to go, we're going to just fall right into the spoilers. So I think we should just warn everybody here. We're going to talk spoilers from now on. So if you haven't read the comic, uh, go pause this, go give it a read, and then come back. But now we're going to be talking about it. So you are at, you at warn, my friends. Okay, so uh, like always, inverted alphabetical order. Silver, what did you think of this comic? Because from the last review, you actually seem rather hyped to talk about it. I am, uh, because it is my third favorite uh, to date. And that's saying something because, well, a lot of people have have gotten used to Cadence and Shining Armor. I still view them with a cold eye. Uh, You say that Shining Armor came with a wife, but I think it's the other way around. We want a wedding episode, so here's a royal princess to get married. Oh, we have to invite, we have to invent a uh, husband for her. Hey, Twilight, you're no longer a single child. (laughs) And so I've always viewed Shining Armor as sort of a tack on to Cadence. <laughs> ah, he's just there to propagate the species. I mean, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's tacking on in the most literal way. Oh, gosh. <sighs> but but um, this comic actually does him and Twilight a service. It handles the topic of how they grew apart... And in a much better way than the Cancelot Wedding ever did. Uh, it also offers a little bit more of a view into Sombra's ego. And uh, as we've stated, planetoid-sized ego, I can uh, relate, except I'm better. <laughs> my only my only criticism is the ending where we find out the big reveal of the mystery and you're just thinking, Really? This is worse than a Scooby-Doo episode, but I think we'll be getting it. If it wasn't for you pesky ponies. But I will say that uh, the one thing that this comic generated before it even came out was inappropriate humor. Anyone who looks at the cover, it, which mm. features uh, Twilight and Shining Armor locking horns, oh my, oh, uh, 
the number of incest jokes that came out on the Equestria Daily forums alone was just overwhelming. Well, I will take anything that is said in Equestria Daily with a pinch of salt. Besides, I, I don't remember who was the one who drew the cover. Uh, I think it was Amy Meverson, actually, from what I'm seeing here on the signature, but she was actually really annoyed by the comments that people were making, um, especially on her Twitter. People were tweeting her directly, like, guys, I'm wagging my finger right in front of you right now. Don't do that. Like, I have no problem with shipping, even if it's with uh, between the, uh, uh, among the same family members. I have no problem with that. You have fun with that. But don't go to the people that work on the show and the comics telling this. Like, don't say that it's a lewd looking cover and oh my god, this is so he 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 he, they are touching horns because, they, they, come on there is there is limits to everyone, you, to everything you don't need to cross that line I actually think it's a beautifully drawn uh, beautifully drawn cover it's a fantastic cover but people kind of ruined it because ah, 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 they're touching horns and I'm like, oh people just be a bit more can you just be grown ups for a couple of minutes it's a cover, it's innocent, and it's very pretty. And you come here with your shipping to ruin it. That's what shippers yeah. do. That's what shippers uh, do. <laughs> that's, that's usually what happens. Yeah. I don't know. I, I enjoy the comic. The comic's pretty... It's sweet and innocent. Like, to whoever has a uh, big brother, younger sister, or vice versa, it's a comic for them. Like, it really touches upon those feelings that you have with your family member. And it's a really good insight in on how Twilight and Shining Armor were back then, and yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I don't know. I don't even know if uh, you jump right into it. I uh, didn't even know if Silver was done with his uh, opinion of it. Oh, I'm I'm good. I, I apparently unleashed the floodgates of rage, and uh, <laughs> now we are trying to close them. I'm sorry, I kind of got mad at um, at those reactions because I, I don't care if people within the fandom fight each other, but if people within the fandom start fighting people outside of the fandom that work on the comic and the show, that kind of upsets me because it gives a bad idea of what the fandom is about. Like, we we shouldn't take our feuds uh, outside of, uh, of, of uh, our lands, if you know what I mean. A very short opinion of, my, of, uh, of uh, from me about this comic. I have a little sister. She, when we were watching, uh, she's like 10 years younger than me. She's almost 20. When we were catching up with My Little Pony, we both watched it. Um, and we were watching uh, the, the Canterlot Wedding episodes. When Twilight started singing, she started crying. And she said, God damn it, I don't want to cry because this is reminding me of like when you were away and all that. And yeah... I, it's impossible for me not to relate to to this comic story. I thought this is great. This is definitely one of my favorite comics in the Friends Forever series because of how well they treat the, the focus of it, the relationship between Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor. It is such a well-done uh, such a well-done chemistry between the both of them which completely makes up for every other failure and fault that uh, we could give on the on the TV show. <clears throat> Like every other time that we have seen them interact with each other, it has been rather awkward. But in this comic, it feels really natural. It feels like it flows really well. But um, yeah, so, so shall we get down to start analyzing the comic and saying the things that we like and we don't like? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Okay. So we start in Ponyville, of all places, uh, still in the... Classic old library that got blasted into pieces. Oh god, I can't get over that. <laughs> As um, Spike is taking a look at uh, Twilight's uh, luggage because she's making the luggage because she's going to visit her uh, brother, and he's looking at a book called uh, the man, the monster, the no, the mm, oh, what is the name of the oh, the Encyclopedia of Real Monsters or whatever? What is the name of this book? Monsterpedia, right? I think so. Encyclopedia like of real monsters, even though it contains monsters no one's seen before. Yeah, and he's, he confuses it first for uh, Obliets and Ogres, the D&D version of, uh, of uh, Equestria's uh, RPG, and I'm like, that is so funny. Like, right away, it's like, yeah, wouldn't it be funny to have a D&D equivalent in a world where there are actually Hydras, dragons, 
griffons and other mythical creatures. <laughs> it's like no wonder he gets he gets confused by that. And Twilight says she's very happy with that book, and it brings her back to um, when her big brother and her were the monster trackers. And they were hunting monsters and investigating monsters and all those things. And she cannot wait to show the book to his to to her brother. So we move to the uh, we move to the Crystal Empire in a rather abrupt uh, uh, change of scenery. There isn't even a transition with the train. It's like one page, Ponyville. Second page, Crystal Empire. Wow. Well, talk about speedy train service. <laughs> I think it just derails the story. <laughs> oh, God, faster than the TGV. Oh, God, don't talk about the railing. Oh, jeez. But it's, um, so when we arrive to the Crystal Empire, and here's well, well, actually well, one of. Well, well, before you plow ahead. Yeah. Sorry, but I just want to point out there's only one thing on the first page that kind of was like, wait, what? Spike is defining BBBFF2 Twilight. That's like holding a big neon sign saying, hey, audience, this is this is for you. <laughs> Exposition. Well, I, I think uh, Spike doesn't hear hear that um, phrase that much. It's so he's a bit confused. So for him to recap what's a BBB triple B whatever it is like, yeah. For for Spike, yeah, and for new readers to the comic who didn't watch the show, it's a good way to explain to the audience what it is. Didn't yeah. watch the show? What what insanity is this? Well, people well, who are shy or do want, do not want to be caught dead watching the show. Yeah, but you know, in that case, Norman, uh, that will be like me going to Silver, going, "Hey, hey, Silver, you know, you are in the MBS show right now, and the MBS show stands for Malaysian Brony Society Show. You get that? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, audience, we can keep going." <laughs> Well, it's a, it's it's one I, way to say it, right? It's one way to say it. Wait, you, you mean this show isn't named the Mondo Booby Society? Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been deceived. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> you cannot you cannot have boobies in here. Sorry for that. Oh, Only intelligent oh. people. <laughs> <sighs> you get that? No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, awkward silence. Anyway, but yeah, you're right. Uh, that is that is also one of the problems with the comic is that it, in some cases it, it gets very exposition heavy. Um, very hey hey, we we want to recap with this. Actually, you did bring this up on your review of Friends Forever number thirteen. That I think the Friends Forever series may have this problem in all of them is that they are too happy with the exposition. Way too happy with the exposition, actually. Mm. Random exposition right. syndrome. It's a classic case. <laughs> Perhaps yeah. they don't trust that other people read the other comics. Probably. Maybe? It's a it's a one way to flush things out some sort of some way naturally without putting an asterisk on the comic, then putting it on the bottom of the page to let people find out like, hey, if you want, go read this comic here and stuff like Marvel yeah, DC but, does that a lot, so it yeah, can but be annoying. That, that is almost that is almost as bad when they put an asterisk at the bottom of the page, and you are like, "Oh God, why do I have to go read this comic? I don't want to keep purchasing comics. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep purchasing issues. I just want to read one comic without having to go to the cliff notes." This is almost as bad. It's not as bad, but it's almost as bad. I no, just well. want to read about ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did this become? When did this turn so complicated? Oh my God! When they started to make more than one series, <laughs> there is four of them now. Yeah. Oh God. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah, but in the Crystal Empire, and uh, they uh, Twilight arrives at the train station, and here is my biggest problem with the comic. This is this is my biggest beef, and this is something that I'm going to keep bringing up as the comic moves moves forward. As Twilight steps out of the train, we have a Monty Python reference. We have a reference to the Ministry of Silly Walks. Oh, yes. And the, there we see the pony walking, very silly, kind of looking like he's making a Heil Hitler gesture with his hoof, which was very weird when I first saw it. I was like, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> he's a reference to Monty Python. Right. Uh, uh, but that's, I think that is one of the biggest problems. Um, in a bit of a tangent here, uh, you know how many times MLP has managed to put pop culture references in the comics? 
and uh, has managed to pull it off without making it uh, distracting. Yeah. Um, and it works really well in almost every other comic out there, but in this one in particular, it's very distracting, and it's going to happen again in a um, in a couple of pages. Actually, in the next page, right away, it's going to happen again. In that, I'm sometimes sorry. the pop. Yeah. Sorry, dude. It's happening in the next panel. Oh, really? Who are these? Oh, this this caused quite a stir on on the forums. Uh, well, first off, if you want your Heil Hitler. That pose might be uh, the one you're looking for. Oh, the I mean, actually, actually, he's just waving hello. This is the unfortunate part of not having fingers. But, <laughs> but that is Frank and Pearl from the TV show Mystery Science Theater 3000 as Crystal Ponies. And there will be, as you say, more. And this is kind of tragic in my eyes. The Crystal Empire is so boring, so uh, poorly developed... That we can't even generate characters for the setting, we just have to take uh, more popular characters from other shows and ponify them. Yeah, you could say that the Crystal Empire is very see-through when it comes to its need. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the humor there is just transparent. Uh-huh, oh uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, your voice box is killing me. Uh, <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. I didn't know. Oh, that the- oh. oh God. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I am not that much of a big fan of uh, Mystery Science Theater, so um, I watch it. I watch it every now and then, but I don't know enough of it to say, oh, look, an, MST th- an MST3K uh, reference. That's cool. I didn't know that. Now I know that. And now I am very angry. Because, yeah, you're absolutely right. They have to put a reference to other things that are not pony and ponyfy them in order to keep it interesting. That's, that's my favorite <sighs> Crystal Empire in a nutshell. It's, it is an empire that was invented simply to say, okay, we've given Keynes and happy, uh, Shining Armor their happily ever after. Oh, crud, they've still got to be in this show? Hmm. Well, where, where can we stick them? Far, far away. Stick them <laughs> stick up your butt. No, wait a minute. <laughs> uh. But Ooh, you, eh. you're on full on hostility today. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I really like this comic. I think it's coming across as I hated it, but no, I think it's a combination of uh, me being unable to make one of these reviews in a while, so I have a lot of pent-up anger wanting to come through, and it can't because it is a great comic, and I don't want to, I don't want to nitpick on it. But hey, we are doing that now, so. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So these two ponies they bring twilight to uh, to the crystal empire uh castle to the to the castle to the crystal castle where she meets with shine and armor who is super happy to see her i mean look look at him in the first panel that we see shine and armor he looks like the most miserable pony in the planet <laughs> he looks so sad he's like oh my god what am i doing here dealing with these people i want to be 1000 miles away from here and when he sees twilight He's like, he's like, Twilight, Twilight, you're here. And he, he looks so happy. Oh, my God. And I think that is one thing that I like so much about Chain and Armor is that just his, uh, the way he, the way he looks and the way he behaves, he is impossibly likable for me. I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I really like this guy. Yeah, I know. Bland and flat and everything, but I still like him. So he looks so happy. I'd like him more if he greeted his sister at the train station just once, which, uh, <laughs> which, well, Billy, I, I like this pre- presentation of him too. My, my greatest wish for Shining Armor is that he had this character arc where he married his true love, but with that came res- new responsibilities. In the show, he hasn't gone to step up to that. He's been either coaching a track and field team or still captain of the guard for some reason. So, here we get to see him not only taking up a leadership role, but saying, hey, that's not so much fun. But the downside is that it caused him to miss his sister at the train again. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is such a small thing, but it has a lot of meaning. The last, the, 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 the first, well, he did meet Toilet Sparkle at the train station once. Uh, under- the problem is that it, it was covered in snow. <laughs> it was under royal edict. Go meet your sister or she'll die. Hmm. I still want to count it. He wasn't that much of a help, though, anyway. 
<laughs> they could have sent a robot, they could have sent a drone, and it would have been the same thing. Well, uh, pony carrier drone. It looks like. Oh tiny. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, and in here we are finally presented to what the what the actual meat of the story is about. This is not just about Twilight meeting Shen in armor, but uh, uh, there is something going on. Uh, with uh, with the castle, there are strange occurrences happening on the library, and all over the castle in particular. And uh, here we go again with the distraction. We are told this not only by this uh, this librarian guy, but through the Mario Brothers as crystal ponies. <laughs> what in the world is Mario and Luigi doing here? They grabbed the wrong mushroom. That's what happened. Turns out this whole comic is just the two brothers tripping. Mamma mia. It's all a hallucination. And, you know, this would be fine if it was only for this page. But they appear in so many pages. You're going to see them again as the comic goes through, go- goes forward. You're going to see them like five or six more times. And they are there to throw references to Super Mario. He's like, oh, princess, don't worry. If you get captured, we're gonna get, we're gonna save you. Or, no, we were, uh, we hear these strange noises that are coming from the lavatory. Get it? Because they are plumbers. Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh, God. <sighs> anyway. But, yeah, they, they, they are told about these weird, strange noises coming from the library and all over the castle. And Twilight almost immediately says that it sounds like a crystal ghost from the Monsterpedia. To which Shannon Armour is not very happy because he doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want the people in the, the, the ponies at the meeting to, uh, be scared. And, to be perfectly honest, I kind of see where he's coming. I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, it might be this, and another thing is, oh, it might be this, I'm going to say this in a room with all the dignitaries of the Crystal Empire, and I am going to freak them out. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you have to keep those things on the low. That is like, sh- like, that is like saying, oh, warning, there is this country that has weapons of mass destruction, and we have to go invade it. Oh, wait a minute, that actually happened, and it didn't go very well. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, as an American, I have no comment. <laughs> Except, That's okay. whoops. whoops. W is bad. <laughs> but, yeah, that is uh, that is one thing that I actually appreciate, Shane and Armand, is that in these pages, he is kind of like, you know, n- he doesn't want to be in that room, but he knows he has no other choice. Uh, it's his duty. He has to take care of that. And even if he doesn't want to, even if he really wants to go and hang out with his sister, he has to stay there and keep listening to those people whining. Mm, true. That's what politics do. So, yeah. Would you say he's answering the call of duty? <laughs> uh, you. Uh, we don't, we don't talk about bad video games in here. We only talk about bad comics. No, not really. <laughs> we talk about everything, but especially comics. And sometimes rule 34, but not always. Uh, so, no. <laughs> <sighs> but okay, you, so oh. you say not always, but let's be honest. Everything can be turned into Rule Thirty Four, uh, even that sentence. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> carrying carrying on. <laughs> no, I want to keep talking about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I uh, Twilight leaves feeling rather defeated because it seems it it seems to her that Shining Armor doesn't want to hang out with her. Uh, but. Uh, because, of course, he says, oh, don't worry, I'm going to go meet you later on. Uh, I cannot go now. I have to keep taking care of these people. So so she goes, goes to bed, and she falls asleep waiting for her, waiting for her brother. To which we are treated to probably one of the most adorable things I have ever seen in these comics. Mm-hmm. I mean, that dream flashback that uh, Twilight has, remembering how uh, Shannon Armour and her used to go around hunting monsters... It is super cute. <laughs> I agree. Like I, I just love to see their faces. It it warms the cockle of my heart. What is a cockle, by the way? I don't know. It's so smart. Never, never seen a cockle in my face in my in my <laughs> life. Not in my face either. It has to be in my heart, right? I, I don't, don't know. know. We're still, no. We're still we're still going that rule thirty four, are we? I uh, know. <laughs> it's okay. cockle, not <laughs> No. <laughs> it, anyway. Cockles in the face. 
What has oh, the cockle? Freudian slip of the tongue. Don't make me draw that again, Silver. <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, boy. But, oh, my God. I have the feeling that we have no focus. And this comic is actually not all over the place, but it's very well... Uh, uh, it's 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 super focusing on the story, and we are going all over. Oh, hmm. but yeah, as uh, Twilight is having a dream, uh, she's sleeping and all that. We see that the book is being snatched by something, something that. Brr, what is that? We don't know. And we see this uh, a big a, a ethereal figure floating around the hallways. We see the Super Mario pro- ponies again. Ah. There is like this ghost thing is going all around during that entire page, and then Twilight gets woken up by not one but many of uh, the ponies that were at the meeting. Well, before we before we plow ahead on that, I do want to note as we see these shots of the castle interior, we actually see the creature. It kind of kills the tension. Mm. I mean, we see it actually shuffle around a pony, so it's kind of obvious that this thing is no threat. Uh, in fact, we actually see a pretty well-defined silhouette of it, which in your average monster movie or, 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 uh, mystery, you really only want to offer a silhouette. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Especially when your monster kind of looks like Baymax from Big Hero 6. Zero. I mean, he kind of looks, looks, he looks, yeah, he kind of looks like Baymax, you know, the ro- the, the white fluffy robot from Big Hero 6. If he like, was a bit hairy. I'm just thinking with the there's a three panel scene where a pony is just absolutely frozen in fear uh, completely petrified and the monster very kindly just shuffles around him <laughs> and I know this because it actually uses the sound effect shuffle 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 <laughs> shuffle 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 <laughs> which is hilarious <laughs> but it might have been funny to just see two ghostly hands pick the pony up and set him aside well <laughs> no comment I I guess well, it it is a very weird way that they introduce the uh, the the monster in the in the comic. Like you say, if they have kept it a silhouette or maybe darkening the scene and just showing the eyes, that could have been a bit more mysterious. Although in that in that panel where he's shuffling away, the ghost looks like he's more more scared of the pony than the pony is of the ghost. Hmm. Like if you look at the face of the ghost, he looks like like oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. He saw me. Okay, he didn't see me. <laughs> Funny. Mm, but yeah, no, I can see where you are where you're coming with that is that the way that they present the monster is not all that effective. Although I think that wasn't the fo- the the goal of the of the story to make the monster scary. I think if they wanted to make the monster scary, they would have used chrysalis again. Yeah. Yeah, I think this, the monster itself is harmless, pretty harmless. Well, that's kind of a spoiler thing to say, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. okay, but, yeah. How dare ahead. you spoil? No. <laughs> God, it's not, like we gave a, it's not like we gave a spoiler warning before we started recording. Oh, wait a minute, we did. Yeah, shut up, Norman. You don't no. know, you know nothing. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, but yeah, we, um, so, the Twilight gets woken up, and the, she has all of the ponies all around her, which, oh my god, that is so awkward. That is so unnecessarily awkward, especially when she, she's like, Gah, what are you all doing in here? Good question. <laughs> she's a princess. Yeah. There is no protocol going on here or, or what? Gah, it's just like that fanfic, and that oh, other god. fanfic, oh, god, and no. that third <laughs> fanfic. Oh no. And you're oh, all those my... C's, dang it. <laughs> they, they they are that well kind of are we have Super Mario going on there but oh my gosh but yeah we have uh, we have Twilight walking up to all of these ponies watching her and of course there's Mario Pony making a reference to Donkey Kong because he said it looked like a gorilla hmm. and here I am face palming so hard it goes through my face oh my god what the hell really we are gonna keep going with that apparently yeah. <laughs> Nah, it's stronger than me. But yeah, Twilight is finally... Uh, she had enough. She's not going to put up with any more of this. So she's going to go to the library to capture that ghost no matter what she has to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it is good to know that she's actually got the help of the librarian pony of whose whose name never 
caught me. Uh, what is what is the name of this guy with the super thick glasses and uh, really badass attitude and the von Karma hairstyle? He kind of looks like von Karma from Phoenix right now that I think about it. I don't know. It doesn't say. Silva? Lexicon. Lexicon? Really? Le- lexicon! Huh, okay. You're right. Lexicon. There you go. So, Twilight enlists the help of Lexicon and... Right when they are setting the trap, Shane and Armor is heading to Twilight's room with the, his old net when we were doing the, the track, the monster trackers, uh, 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 adventures. And that's when he learns that Twilight is through the library, in the library trying to capture the crystal ghost. And I once, once more I have to bring up, I think one of my favorite things in this comic are Shane and Armor's faces. Because he's, I know it's weird for a character who, who's, uh, the inside of his eyes, the white of his eyes is not white. It's like very light blue. And he's one of the most expressive characters in the entire uh, comics. Not just the comics, but also the show. I love the faces that this guy makes. And Shining Cure has always been that one awesome dude. Like, <laughs> I, I do enjoy how his expression is, even in the show. I love the way that he... Uh, that. Uh, uh, and I know this has nothing to do with the comics as of right now, but I love the way that an, uh, Andrew Francis plays yeah. Shane Armour. <laughs> kind of like a surfer dude. Yeah. <laughs> I got no idea why, though. It's, it's, it's just strange. Well, I guess in my case, it makes him more likable. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, so Twilight tries to capture the monster, doesn't work out, Shining arrives with his net and throws this right on top of Lexicon. Not managing to capture the monster or anything. The monster is actually gone. Now that the brothers, the, the brother and sister, now that the siblings are together, siblings, I have to remember that word, siblings. Now that the siblings are together, it's time for the monster truckers to go back in action. And this is the part of the comic that shines. Uh, no pun intended on Shane and mm-hmm. uh, But this is the part of the comic that makes me really like it. Is that, uh, for the next pages, we see Twilight and Shining trying to figure out how they have to get to the uh, quote-unquote monster lair, and at no point one seems smarter than the other, or one overpowers the other when it comes to wits or intelligence or anything like that. They actually both uh, work together to figure out the way to the end of the uh, the end of the caves. Like mm-hmm. Shane Armour is the one that figures out the uh, the library has a secret passage and. Twilight is the one that uses the light to uh, light up the way and uh, find out one of the traps. And uh, Shining Armor also discovers how to deactivate another one of the traps. And Twilight is the one that knows how to get through the maze without getting lost. Well, it's, it, is a, it is a great moment. To me, it's like, that is great. They are working off of each other. They are not... Uh, one is not being more important than the other. They are very well balanced. This is so cool. I like this a lot. And I was really enjoying it. Uh, to me, this is the absolute best part of the comic, how they are working off of each other. Yeah, I enjoyed it so much. It, like I said, uh, heart touching. I really like it. There's also, like I said, that insight into King Sombra's ego as they traverse statues that are meant to bow as he passes, which have been modified into a monster trap. <laughs> uh, and, and it's funny thing is that it's Shining Armor who uh, who sees this so. I think he understood King Sombra a little bit better than Twilight even. But my favorite part of this, especially going through the um going through the labyrinth, is that they recount well, kinda of how they drifted apart. In in a Cantalot wedding, it was all on shining armor. He was inviting his sister via form letter to his wedding. <laughs> I was like, You jerk. I mean, I'm sorry, this is kind of what poisoned me against Shining Armor from the outset. You tell me he's the greatest big brother, but then when I look at what's happening, I'm thinking, no, this is not the actions of a good brother. <laughs> uh, but here, they're admitting they both drifted apart. They both got distracted by their responsibilities as they grew up. And that, in a lot of ways, this is sort of them rekindling that connection they had in childhood, even if it is meant to be serious. When when Shining says, oh, you're an alicorn princess now, I think. Thanks, Hasbro. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, she was pretty special before she became an alicorn princess. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes the little things in life matters. And when you change, like the obvious change with Twilight, getting wings, it's a, it's a big change. And 
that now Twilight is a princess and Shining Armor is a prince and well they, they, both of them have responsibility and it's not oh, easy for them to meet up and do stuff and them talking about how they parted ways here it's it's awesome that's all I can say it is probably one of the most natural moments of the entire comic uh, not just not just of this issue in particular but I mean of, out of all of them, um, because it is it is very easy to tell when um, when you you can actually hear the music towards the end of uh, most of the issues when they are writing the lesson to Princess Celestia, mm-hmm. like you know the, the the classic theme when they are writing the letter or when they are writing re- writing on the di- on the diary. Uh, but in this one, you are actually being told that uh, sometimes brothers and sisters fall apart or like siblings they fall apart they. Uh, they uh, get away from each other because life gets in the way and there is nothing you can do to prevent it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that doesn't mean that the love is less legit. That is really good. It's really great. It's told very naturally and it's, um, it develops both Twilight and Shining, something that none of the other comics uh, has managed to do. I mean, despite how much um, I, I think we all enjoyed uh, the nay everything arc with t- Twilight, Twilight, Cadence, and Shining Armor, and how it explains how Cadence met Shining. Mm-hmm. Um, but that arc didn't do much to develop them as characters. Mm-hmm. Like it, it presented them in a very fun way. It it broke a lot of tropes of the genre, but it didn't expand them so much as characters. This comic, however, is doing that. Um, hell, I'm pretty sure people will warm up to Princess Cadence when they give her a Friends Forever comic. Yeah, that, that's that's the dream. I I hope they do. I hope they do as well. Not that I said that I really want to see a Princess Cadence Friends Forever comic, actually. You know, but here's the thing: if we do see a Princess Cadence uh, combo, who would it be with? Because the obvious one would oh. be Twilight, but I don't want that one. No, no, no! Spike. Don't do that. Prin- yes, Spike. Spike, really? Out of all? Yeah, yeah. Because He's... yeah, because we already yeah. That, it makes sense. Go go ahead, Silver. You are thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, Spikes, we're going to have a Friends Forever with Loon and Spike in the short order. And uh, there was a Spike in Celestia, which was one of the best. Uh, and so Spike is, in essence, the royal consort. And so... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, I, I do these jokes specifically to get that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I will be here laughing my ass off. You continue. <laughs> mm. So, you know, if, if Spike's going to be the princess's ladies' man, maybe teach Shining <laughs> Armor a few things about friendship. Oh, God. Uh, but no, it Ooh, makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to have Cadence with Spike because they together saved the Crystal Empire on the season three premiere. So, why, why not, why not having Spike hanging out with Cadence? That would make a lot of sense. Well, I prefer to have Cadence hang out with uh, Celestia because these, they're aunt and niece, so I want to see the interaction between them. Yeah, but we, they are both alicorns and princesses. Usually yeah, but, the interaction works better when the characters have nothing to do in common, like what happened with Rarity and Babs. Yeah, probably, but I, I still want to see that Luna and Cadence, no, sorry, um, Celestia Cadence comic combo. Well, we, we, we should bring something up. I mean... I, I too adore Rarity and Babs, my favorite to date mm-hmm. you know, at the time at the time of this recording. Uh, this, but this comic represents the other end of the spectrum. These are two characters that should and are kind of expected to go on a story together, brother and sister. In mm-hmm. fact, it's always been. <laughs> I'll tell you guys right now: the worst moment in the show, the weakest scene I've ever witnessed, is where mm-hmm. Shining Armor declares he's got to find the Crystal Heart. And Twilight immediately shuts him down. <laughs> and I just thought, that is so bad. Uh, that is, really? That is, even oh, even, even it, worse than the time that Shane and Armor completely uh, like, uh, set Twilight aside saying, if I were you, I couldn't go to the, to the wedding at all. Like, not even that. That, that one is worse no. than that other moment. Wow. Oh, yes. Because in the, in the Cantalot wedding, Twilight goofed. I mean, there's no, let's not make excuses for her, she accused Cadence in front of everyone, well, 
turns out she was right, but didn't know that. Yeah, that's my problem. She was right about it. So he's like, oh, you don't goofed, but, but you were right. But there's so no evidence. But there's she no evidence. Right, but, she, but she went about it in the wrong way. And as a consequence, she looks like the aggressor. She was too, mm, she was too excited, much as she was in this comic, to talk about the crystal ghost. Twilight has an impulsive problem. Uh, but in the Crystal Empire, it's sort of an amalgam of things. It's C- Celestia's bad edict. Only you can get the Crystal Heart to Cadence. Uh, it's the girls only club. <laughs> this guy has a reason to participate. His wife is in danger. This is taking a physical toll on her. He, sh- he should have even more reason than Twilight to get this done. But no, he has to take back seat because Twilight's test takes pre- takes precedence. Uh, it's the main six click, not letting other characters participate. And I could go on, but the point is, this comic is what the Crystal Empire two-parter should have been. Brother and sister working to save this empire. Well, but then you won't have the whole part where Twilight is stressing out and stuff, and Sacrificing something that needs to be done, like doing, doing the right thing, something like that. Oh no, I, I will try to contain my disappointment. I'm going to call out on the, uh, the show writers, um, and Hasbro themselves. If they weren't limited by the TVY, uh, rating, I'm pretty sure they would have been able to come up with that kind of story. Because the comics are coming up with, to be honest, in many occasions, more mature, more timeless, and more enjoyable plots for their stories and the and the issues and the story arcs than the the TV show itself. The TV show is keeping itself very simple, very innocent, very all that. But the comics are taking more risks. You wouldn't see a t- you wouldn't see a two part episode where. Uh, Twilight Sparkle and her uh, her friends travel to an alternate dimension where they find Celestia's former boyfriend. You will not see that. However, the comics are kind of like playing around with that because they can allow allow themselves to do that. So, if the right if Megan McCarthy and company had a lit more a bit more lenient from Hasbro, I'm pretty sure they will be able to put up a story like that in the show. However, that is something that is limited to the comics at this moment. True. Hopefully, in the future, we will be able to see something that epic done. Perhaps in the My Little Pony movie. But right now, I think we're going to have to put up with things like Shining Armor and Twilight being sided by, hey, we have to sell another product. <laughs> Let's go with that. And I think that's, that's why it's so good to have the comics around. Because the comics allow you to have uh, a, a bit more meat in your story. You can get a, lead, a little bit more out of the out of the comics than out of the show. In, in fact, if the comic reviews that we are doing show anything of that, is uh, these reviews are way longer than the episode reviews that we have been doing. True, 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 true. Yeah. And Norman, I, I'm sorry if I sound condescending by dismissing Twilight's uh, moral in A Crystal Empire, but so much of her character and Celestia's character got damaged by that presentation. I yeah. honestly felt like the, the moral wasn't worth it. Well, that, that's the problem with the series because they're limited to what they can do. And uh, trust me, like I do agree with you guys when you said that you wanted it to be with um, the brother, brother sisters, Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor to at least work together to find the crystal heart. That that would be an awesome lesson to itself. But unfortunately, we are forced to accept that it's just Spike who has to save the day with a different kind of morale. I don't want you to think that uh, that I... uh, Well, I'm not completely agreeing with Silver, but I know exactly where he's coming. I really like the Crystal Empire episodes, but from a world-building standpoint, I like the fact that they take two episodes to flesh out this place. Uh, sucks that they don't do much with it in the episodes after, <laughs> but uh, it is it is good to know that they are at least showing a bit more of um, they, they are having a bit more fun throwing the flugel horn, the crystal berries, the the petting zoo with the use, the jousting competition, uh, how the crystal empire holds the crystal fair in order to to recharge the crystal heart, crystal, crystal, crystal. But it is it, that that's why I enjoy it. 
The problem is that the story is super weak and that the execution in is not all that clean. It's not a perfect episode by far, but I I I cannot fault it. I really like those kind of stories. True, 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 true. So about this story. Yes, uh, we, we, <laughs> which we we literally stopped dead on dead on our tracks right when Twilight and Shane are catching up, and um, they are about to reveal the monster, and the monster is a cry baby. What? <laughs> hey. he's, he's crying his eyes out while surrounded by uh, by books, and he, they are like what. What are you? What's what happens to you? And there he reveals that he used to work for uh, King Sombra, reading him uh, books and keeping him entertained as Sombra kept him trapped in this dungeon. Firstly, I think the ghost was just reading Old Yeller. <laughs> I cry like a baby every time. <laughs> Maybe uh, little women, little oh mares. <laughs> little women. Uh. <laughs> But poor, uh, poor fella, poor fella. God, poor guy. Yeah, job is to read fanfics to Sombra. Oh god, to this that spot, holy cow. Yeah, but yeah, and it is kind of fun. I, I can kind of see why he wasn't. Uh, he didn't dare to go uh, outside of the cave or try to like you know uh, free himself. Mm-hmm. The poor guy has like Stoc- Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> Uh. Or, and th- this poor thing has been trapped in there for like uh, years, decades, <laughs> hell, th- centuries. Like uh, King Sombra was still alive when uh, when this poor thing was still going. And so wait, didn't the uh, Celestia and Luna fought Sombra? Wouldn't that make it more than a few centuries? Like maybe two thousand years, a thousand, or even more. A thousand years, a thousand years, or something like that. Yeah. Everything happens a, a thousand years ago in this show. Remember? <laughs> True that. I, I truly think Celestia is just lying about her age at this point. <laughs> she's been she's been a thousand years for a while. Hey, Celoreal, <laughs> because she's worth it. That's why she's so young. Oh, she's wow. so young, pretty. Not even gonna go there. Not even gonna go there. But yeah, uh, so the ghost is scared. He wants to go. He he wonders what's going on. And Twilight and Shane and Armor they tell him that Sombra is gone. He's been gone for a while, and he can get out of the jail. He can get out of the caves and uh, get a normal life. Mm-hmm. And I was so happy that it had this resolution because one thing that we didn't brought up is at the same time that Twilight and Shining were uh, looking for the ghost and go- finding out what was going on. Lexicon has been following them, <laughs> and his glasses were broken. Mm-hmm. So if this was a movie directed by Robert Zemeckis or anyone like that, uh, it will get to the point that Lexicon appears and he starts fighting the, the ghost, throwing him books or whatever. Or that will be a big misunderstanding. But thankfully, because this comic has a limit on how many pages it can have, Lexicon appears and right away gives the ghost a job <laughs> to start reshelving all of the books, putting them back into place. Well, he has a responsibility to do like all those entries of taking books without getting them checked out. All those late fees. Mm. Yeah, oh, but God. that is... He'll be oh, bankrupt for fees. decades. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the ghost is going to pay those in crystals. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> Mm. Crystals, but no, I I like that because Lexicon is an okay character, and this will be the moment that either makes or breaks the character. This moment where he is uh, so open to get the ghost and put him to, uh, put him to <laughs> hire, that makes the character very likable to me. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, okay, you're cool, you're cool. Yeah, that, I, give, I, giving credit to the writer, giving credit to Rob Anderson for making this character actually likable. I do like his line. And what are you all doing in my room? <laughs> <laughs> and those and those spidery eyes. Uh, no. How about you try the broken passes? We conquer the Crystal Empire with the Legion of Spiders. <laughs> spiders. <laughs> we Why have officially no... gone off the rails. <laughs> Why does no one like the spiders? <laughs> oh God! Nobody likes the spiders plan. <laughs> Why does no one like the spiders? Uh, reminded me of that guy with glasses. Thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. If this comic was uh, was dubbed, this character should be voiced by Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. You know, if, it was a, if, it, if he'd been a female character, I would have said, get the voice actress for Velma. <laughs> my glasses! Vel- I can't see without my glasses! Uh, that's <laughs> that's that's good, I guess. I don't know. Oh, Velma. I didn't like Velma in Scooby-Doo. I'm sorry. We're talking about the same Velma, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know many other many other Velma. But Velma hey, the guys, Velma guys, Velma we're, the <laughs> we're um, digressing and off the tracks. Uh, no, we're, we're almost having fun, Norman. <laughs> we're near no. the end. Uh, we're near the end. But, but again, shining armor is not greeting us at the train tracks, the bastard. <laughs> no, he is actually. He's saying, he's saying goodbye. At least he That's... walks her to the train. That's good. At least he's giving her a better farewell than he did in the Crystal Empire. Yes, I'm still bitter. <laughs> well, okay, Silva, I got a question for you, Dan. Are you bitter because your roommate is Sombra, or are you seriously bitter? I'm seriously bitter. It's like, God, I just... I spent several months thinking about the Cantalot wedding and watching people argue about it. And then they pull this Crystal Empire stuff, and they're like, okay, here's another chance. Gain the shining armor, really. You gotta wow me here. You gotta make me say you're more than toy advertisements. You're living in a toy advertisement. (laughs) At Twilight, you're on the road to season three. I hope you're ready for a ride. Buckle up, Uh. princess. (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, so Sombra, so, so Sombra is okay, and he's not um, vengeful. Well, of course, he's vengeful. He's a villain. <laughs> uh, he's a bad guy. But in fact, we're all looking forward. I'm looking forward to his fiendship is magic in April. <laughs> uh, oh, dude, I cannot wait to that one as well. I think that is the one that I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, okay, with Chrysalis and all that, those are fun, but. This one is going to be kind of like a history class in Equestria. Like, oh, we're going to be told what happened at the Crystal Empire. This is going to be like a flashback or something, right? Oh, cool. From what the, from what the synopsis is uh, giving away. That's the hope, at least. Uh, who knows? They may. I've only read one quote, and I don't want to take us further off tangent, but uh, what can I say? I just think... He's got the most potential. This comic offered us a little bit of an insight into his, like I say, his ego. He wants everything to submit to him. And even his entertainment has to be afraid of him. Hmm. But but I always am fascinated that he is a pony, a slightly atypical pony, but still he's a, he's a sign that the uh, the species can fall. And I'd like to think it's more fleshed out than I feel like being evil today. <laughs> today I feel like tormenting an innocent ghost. <laughs> yeah. Trying to be evil today, I have to say crystals seven times in front of the mirror. I don't feel <laughs> evil enough. <laughs> crystals, <laughs> slaves, ponies. My crystal pony slaves. <laughs> <sighs> Although I realize there's one thing that they completely left out of the comic. What? Stairs. What <laughs> no, 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 no! They didn't leave it out. If you see at the beginning, they are actually going down some f- some stairs, and they go on for a long time. But these are Cybra's catacombs. He must have at least three flights. <laughs> it's a fl- free free flight minimum here. Uh, he ran was... out of he ran out of uh, uh, blocks in Minecraft, and he he oh, spent God. all of them on the tower. <laughs> mm. He spent all of them on the tower. Anyway, guys, uh, one hour and a clock. <laughs> well, so what? We're having fun. Uh, uh, but uh, there's really not more, not much else to say. The the crystal guy. I don't think they ever give the name for the species. He's just high crystal guy. <laughs> uh, and came and China Armor does see Twilight off to the train, and it's a sweet farewell. I mean, it's a. It is. It, it sums up the bond that they share in this comic, which is probably the best presentation of brother sister dynamics in the entire franchise so far. I agree. I agree. Much better than what we have seen with Apple Bloom and uh, Applejack. At least uh, at the time of the recording, uh, we don't know what season five is going 
is going to have on store for us. But yeah, I agree with with you, Silver. This is the best representation of brother and sister relationships or sibling relationships at that point. So yeah, our final verdict, guys. It is in my top three. It is one of the best friends forever. Uh, I won't say that there's a lot of intrigue with chasing the ghost. That's more just a backdrop to give Twilight and, and Shining Armor a chance to shine together. Pun intended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I just got it. Uh, there you go. So I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad for a better viewing that treats Shining Armor as a true character and not just an add-on. Uh, and my only regret is that the Crystal Empire has potential. It has this venue for so many stories and so many uh, issues being out of place for a thousand years. But you have to bring in all these pop culture references just to populate the the city come on it's no but I, I i agree with what you say there silver is that uh, that is my biggest beef with the comic really it, the goddamn references all over the place and this is not like when uh, Katie Cook and Andy Price were having fun with the Crystal Arc and uh, there is an entire page which is Temple of Doom the Shining Evil Dead uh, Phantom of the Opera, a creature from the Black Lagoon. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Reference, reference, reference. It's like, that, that, that definitely shows that they're having fun with it and they're enjoying themselves because it's within its own universe. But the Crystal Empire is just reference, 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 and we are not adding anything to the story. What does Mystery Science Theater, Super Mario Brothers, and Monty Python have in common? Except that maybe British people work with them. Hmm. Like, what is... Yeah, it it doesn't add up. That is the biggest problem with the comic. But, that aside, the relationship between Shane and Urban and Twilight is perfect. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a, as a, the older of the older of the family and uh, with, uh, with a little sister, the, oh god, that hits so close to home in so many moments. It's it's unbelievable. Mm, true, true. I enjoy the comic a lot. It, like me being a older brother myself, I find the morals of the story in this one very appealing, and I do enjoy the art. And well, mostly Ted Anderson did a really good job here. I, I do like his um, what you call this life of life stories. It's really entertaining, and yeah, it's done well. It's done well. Can don't I don't have anything more to say? It's just sorry, not Ted, but Rob Anderson. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm 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 still good. I'm still good. Not sure if we have a relation right there, but hey, who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't know how common the uh, Anderson surname is in America. Well, you've seen it in the Matrix, Mister Anderson. Tom Anderson. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <sighs> So, oh, well, truthfully, if they see each other in the hallway, they both have to break into a round of Anderson. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, but, yes. <laughs> but they do it all West Side Story like. <laughs> that's the way. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's uh, for this week's review. Uh, next week we are going to be reviewing uh, the Friends Forever issue number five, uh, which is rather shy. And Sekora, written by Tom Saylor, uh, with art by Tony Flix and colors, colors by Heather Breckel. Now, that one, I cannot wait to talk about that one. That one is going to be fun to talk about. I, I Seriously, I cannot wait. I have to stop myself before I start talking about it. Hmm. Uh, this one is going to be a good one. <laughs> we shall see. Indeed. We shall see. We shall see. But until then, uh, it's time for us guys to bid you all a good night, good evening, or good morning, whatever it is that, uh, at the place that when you're listening to this. And thank you all so much for watching and listening to our podcast. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you all for watching. Indeed. Thank you so much. Which is gracias. <laughs> bye bye. See you later. I'm still a pop culture reference. <laughs> Okay, you know, give me that sound box. Uh, Never. <laughs> I'm gonna chase you around in the corner. <laughs> 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 <laughs>